The British had a ruthless economic agenda when it comes to the administration of India. They did not show even the basic empathy for the people. Under British Raj, India suffered countless number of famines. But the worst hit was Bengal. The company was only interested in maximizing its own revenue, while the situation of the farmers was completely ignored by the British. Before the British period, the tax rate was only about one part of the tenth of the agricultural produce. But the British increased it to 50% of the agricultural produce overnight. During the British time, the land revenue was triple compared to the Mughal period. Because of this, the local farmers could not pay the land tax and they had no other option other than selling their land to the rich merchants. When British took over Mughals, they made orders to go cash crops for trade purposes. Now the farmers who used to grow vegetables and millets are forced to grow only cash crops which yielded ridiculously high value in the British market and there was no backup done for the edible eatable crops. So the British forced the farmers to harvest cash crops like poppy and indigo, took the raw materials from India, exported it to England, then brought back the finished goods from England to Indian markets, then sold it to Indian people at a high cost. This obviously ruined the textile industry of Bharat as well. In 1765, the Treaty of Allahabad was signed between the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II and the East India Company. By this treaty, the East India Company took over the task of collecting taxes from the people. Also, the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II agreed to pay 53 lakhs to the East India Company to get back the military and administration rights that was previously taken over by the British. During this time, the British insisted to call it as tribute rather than tax and increase the tax on people to 50%. The poor people were not even aware of this. They ended up paying the tax thinking it would go to the emperor. Failure crops was quite common with Indian farmers. So they always kept a surplus stock which was very important in case of famine. But as the British increased the tax, the surplus also got deteriorated day by day. In 1768 itself, there were failure of crops here and there. And the people did not have any backup to produce food. In 1769, there was a monsoon failure followed by severe drought. So the starvation death started by 1769 itself, but the British and the East India Company completely ignored the situation. By 1770, the death rate started increasing so rapidly and more than 10 million people died in this famine. This is more than the number of Jews died during the Second World War. The Jews are repeatedly writing about it, making movies about it. They are repeatedly reminding the world what kind of injustice was done to them. But here, forget about the rest of the India, how many Bengali people were told about the depth and details of this cruelty. It almost wiped out one third of the population of Bengal, but still no one talks about it here. The famine of 1770 in Bengal was far deadlier than the Black Plague that affected the Europe in the 14th century. Thousands of people migrated from their place in hopes of finding livelihood elsewhere, only to die of starvation later. And those who decided to stay back made their life beyond miserable. Since the farms were abundant, it resulted in inhabitable areas for those people as well. During the king's rule, whenever the possibility of famine had emerged, the Indian kings would waive their taxes and would take compensatory measures such as irrigation and providing reliefs to the people. But the Britishers continued to ignore all the warnings that came their way regarding the famine. Forget about the relief measures, they once again increased the tax to 60% in order to compensate themselves for the revenue they used to get from the diet farmers. It was nothing but the profit mindset of the British that killed the 10 million people of Bengal. What is even more ironic is that the East India Company generated more revenue in 1771 than they did in 1768. Just imagine, 10 million people died of hunger but the British company generated more profit than they did before. So the next time when you say India got benefited from the British rule, just remember you are also doing injustice to the 10 million people who died of hunger.